So now that I have an electric vehicle, I've been thinking about getting more solar panels. And I know some things have changed here in 2020. The tax credit has shrunk a little bit. So that is why I have my friends Sinue and Riley here from DroneQuote. We're going to be talking about everything solar here in 2020. Ricky, thank you so much for having us on your channel. I'm Sinue Montoya with DroneQuote. I'm an Army veteran, and DroneQuote is here to disrupt how people buy solar and roofing. And I'm Riley Wiggins, the other co-founder of DroneQuote. Um, thank you so much, Ricky, for having us out. We can definitely answer all your questions. Awesome. So that's what we're doing today. But as always, before we begin, thank you so much for watching. If you're new, consider subscribing. We are a channel dedicated to the future of technology, energy, and transportation. I'm Ricky, and this is Tuba DaVinci. All right, so lightning round. I want to hear the five most interesting facts about going solar in 2020. Go. Number one, I guarantee you, after you install solar, you're going to use more power than you thought you would. More power? There's actually a name for this. It's called the Javens Paradox, and it means that as things become more efficient, people use more of that resource. Number two, uh, your solar panels will actually protect your roof from further weather damage and also keep the rooms directly under the solar panels a bit cooler. Number three, the payoff period for solar could be as low as four years. Now, that's gonna really depend on how much electricity costs where you live. So the higher the cost of electricity, the shorter the payoff period. If you have low cost of electricity, like in places like Texas, your payoff period is gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of seven to eight years. However, the payoff period for paying the utility is indefinite. You never pay off the utility. And if you're curious, I'll put a, put a link to a video where I talk about my prices here in San Diego. It's crazy, they've gone up like 8% pretty much every year. Actually, you know what? In 2013, the cost of electricity in San Diego was about 16, 17 cents per kilowatt hour. Today, in 2020, the summer pricing tier one is 29 cents. And if you go into the higher tiers during on peak hours, you're looking at 50 cents plus per kilowatt hour. Yeah, I think people hear that and they, they think it's like a typo or, or a mistake, but that's, that's right. We pay over 50 cents a, a yeah, kilowatt Yeah, it'll hour. for sure make you think twice about charging your phone. <laughs> Number four, a really big misconception about going solar is when the power is out or the grid is out, you also have power. Now that's only true if you have a system that has a dedicated receptacle or you have batteries. And solar and batteries go together like peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, I made earlier videos where I call 2020 the year of the battery, especially for residential storage. So your quotes can offer both solar and batteries, yeah? Correct, we can offer people uh, varying quotes on the panel type and also on the battery type. And can you get just batteries or does it have to be coupled with panels as well? You can definitely just install batteries uh, in your house if you're looking to just do energy storage and energy arbitrage, which is charging your uh, batteries on the lower cost or the off-peak hours and discharging your battery on the on-peak hours. A point that I'll share with everybody watching is that if you buy batteries with solar, you get a 26% tax credit on the battery as well. And the 26% is the new ITC uh, investment tax credit for 2020, right? That's right. In 2019 and before, it was a 30% tax credit. Since then, it's come down to 26% for 2020. And you ready for this? In 2021, it's gonna go down to 24%. And then after that, in 2022, there will be no tax credit for solar. So for anyone thinking if 2020 is a good time to go solar, I'd say yeah, for this reason. We're already not getting 30% credit anymore, but 26 is pretty good. And that credit is being phased out. If you're waiting for the best technology for solar panels, you're gonna be waiting forever. It'll always continue to improve. And the tax credit is only gonna to continue to decrease and eventually go away. If you're thinking about it like cell phones, if you're waiting for the best iPhone to come out, you're gonna be waiting every single year. For us here with over 300 days of sunshine and really high bills, it's kind of a no brainer. And as I look around my neighborhoods, every has solar, right? But what about people who live in other places where they say, you know, electricity is like 12 cents a kilowatt hour? So when you purchase solar, it's always going to be less expensive typically than you would get it from the utility. So even if you have uh, the electricity costing you 12 cents a kilowatt hour, you can beat that by almost in half, uh, six cents, maybe even seven cents a kilowatt hour from the solar panels. So in that case, you know, you're cutting the, your cost of electricity in half and you're allowing yourself to have more electricity than you would otherwise use. So if you've seen our channel before, you've probably seen that we have links to Dronco and the services that they provide. And when I met these guys and they told me about their business model, I was absolutely fascinated. We started Drone Quote because we saw that there was an issue in the industry with homeowners not wanting to actually uh, get quotes for solar because of the in-home salesperson and the pushy sales tactics that generally come along with it. Uh, so we bring a hassle-free method where we deliver multiple quotes uh, comp with competitive pricing all online to the homeowner where they can view it at their own time in the comfort of their own home. 
So obviously drone is in the name. Um, that's got to be fascinating people. So how does that work into the equation? Sure. Well, actually, we use drones because uh, my man Senua here, when we used to work for a different solar company here in Southern California, um, he's pretty short and he doesn't like to get on top of roofs. So he would actually send his drone out to take pictures of the roofs. So that way, when I would go in to design the system, I would know exactly what was happening on that roof and where I can land panels. Um, that's where we got the idea of we don't need to get on these roofs anymore. We don't need to bring ladders uh, for a pre-installation photos or for pre-install qualification. It's a lot easier to send a drone out than it is a, a human to get on the roof. So if you're looking to get solar quotes, you come to drone quote and we have a very simple process where we actually do all of our qualification over satellite imagery and we can put together your multiple quotes from local vendors in your area. Um, once you're ready to move forward with one of those quotes is when we send the drone out to your house to do a full uh, pre-installation inspection of your roof and, and document the entire process for you. And what we're able to offer the homeowner that nobody else is doing is a drone survey that offers ultra high definition imagery so the homeowner can see this is the before and this is the after. And we're able to show to the homeowner, hey, the integrity of your roof was kept intact. And by the way, let me also share with the viewers out there that the drone quote process is not just for solar. If they're looking to put on a new roof, we'll give them multiple quotes for that as well. If I got a quote, would it be hard to compare because company A uses solar panels from this company and company T uses a different brand and they all say they're the best. And like, would it be hard to have an apples to apples comparison? So Ricky, whenever a customer comes to the drone quote portal, we're gonna do a full qualification process to figure out exactly what their needs are and that way we can fit their needs uh, whether it be the exact same type of panel model or the exact same type of panel wattage we like to show them um, the same manufacturer through the whole process so that they can compare apples to apple so how important is the brand of panels you could be buying just for the name or you could be buying it because it is a high quality panel or a higher wattage panel but don't a lot of them have the same 25 year warranty Generally, most panels will carry a 25 year warranty, some of them up it to a 30 year warranty. So it really is gonna depend on uh, what type of panel you go with, uh, which depends on what type of warranty that comes with. So one question I get all the time is, are there maintenance costs to the panels? And how often do I have to clean them? Or do I have to clean them? The solar system itself doesn't require a lot of maintenance. Hypothetically speaking, you can clean your system maybe once a year or more if you live in a place where there's a lot of um, uh, dust or pollen. Uh, but for the most part, solar systems don't require much maintenance. The actual real maintenance, if you will, that will come down the road is when your inverter fails. And that's gonna be more of an issue if you have multiple inverters, known as microinverters, where if one fails, that panel itself will stop producing power. The other panels will continue to function. Now here's the catch though. If that one inverter fails and you have a service call for that one inverter, then you can anticipate that if you're further down the road, you're gonna have another inverter fail and another and another. So when it comes to maintenance, you don't really have any, but the inverter will eventually need to be replaced. And if it's a single point inverter, it makes it a lot easier because it's somewhere on the ground level and it's only one inverter that needs to be replaced. I went with Enphase microinverters and they're nine years old now and they've been so far they've been perfect they have a 25-year warranty and so some of the benefits of microinverters is each individual inverter has less of a load so they don't make they don't get as hot and as a result the end phase inverters have a 25-year warranty whereas most of the string tie inverters are like 10 year maybe? Yeah, so a solar edge inverter will have a 12 year warranty. And the point you made is actually dead on that one inverter has a much lower workload than one, one single point inverter. So yeah, I, I kind of like the idea of going with the micro inverters for that reason, but, but string inverters are cheaper, right? Well, actually, you know what? Uh, solar edge, which really dominates the market for inverters nowadays, is a single point inverter, which could be known as a string inverter, but it has what's called power optimizers underneath each panel. So you, you still have panel level functionality with one inverter being the heart of the system. I'm curious, what kind of panels do people go with most often? Like what's the most popular? And what type of inverter are they going with? You get a lot of bang for your buck with LG panels because they are very high in efficiency, they're high in wattage, and they're not exorbitantly expensive. Uh, sometimes homeowners will ask for a budget panel, so then that would be something like Qcell or Canadian Solar or Trina Solar. But for the most part, it's either LG, sometimes Panasonic, because Panasonic's got some really cool technology, and then sometimes even SunPower. But SunPower's been making some of the highest wattage and most efficient panels that exist in the market for quite some time now. Let's talk about efficiency and like what is an efficient panel and how much wattage does that translate to? Sure, so uh, when it comes to efficiency with solar panels, there's a wide range of output. Anything from 260 watts, which is your budget panel, all the way up to 400 watts, which is that SunPower, you know, more of that premium Cadillac style panel. 
Um, a SunPower panel is going to have something close to about 22% uh, efficiency, an LG panel closer to 19%, and then once you get down to the budget panels like the Q cells, you're looking closer to 16 to 17% efficiency. Um, so when you go with something like a SunPower or even an LG panel, you're able to put a lot more power on your roof in a smaller area than you would with a say 300 or I'm sorry 260 watt budget panel if you're looking to make sure that you get the best bang for your buck you want to save the most money and you have the roof space for it there's no issue with going with a smaller wattage panel that has a great warranty at the end of the day if you do have limited roof space and you need to make sure that you can maximize your output you do need to go with a higher wattage panel to make sure that you can meet your needs potentially if you have lower wattage panels covering your entire roof you may have to replace the entire system in the future if you do if you do need a bump in power and by the way nine years ago when I got my power Panels, I paid $10,000 for a 1.2 kilowatt system. I got five 235 watt panels for $10,000. And how far we've come just in nine years, right? Uh, I think I can probably get triple the system now, right. if not more maybe. You get about triple the system Triple nowadays. system. So why don't we talk a little bit about price. Now this is really regional and based on where you live, these prices are going to vary. But could you kind of just give us a ballpark about average system size and how much it costs. Yeah, so Ricky, the thing that viewers should know is that when it comes to solar, it's going to depend on where the homeowner lives um, and how you should look at the price is similar to how you look at gallons of gasoline, right? You pay $2 a gallon for gasoline if you're lucky and you don't live in San Diego where you pay like $4 a gallon. Uh, buying solar panels is very similar in that you pay per watt. So if you have a 10,000 watt system in San Diego, that's gonna cost you somewhere about $2.90 to $3 a watt. So that 10,000 watt system would cost you $30,000 uh, as an example. But in places like Florida or Texas, the cost of living and the cost of everything is lower. You could anticipate a solar system to cost you somewhere in the neighborhood of you know, 250, 260 a watt. Um, so really it does depend on where you live. But what we were talking about earlier, the kind of panel you select also factors greatly into that price. There's also a lot of other variables that can come with the solar system that can change the cost, um, especially if you have a electrical service panel uh, that's generally on the side of your home that can't fit the solar system, uh, you're gonna have to upgrade that, which will increase the cost, or if there's other work needed, like roof work. Wow, so if you live in like Texas or Florida, you're paying 250 a watt, that's... Yeah, 250 watt, and based off what you just said, it sounded like you're paying closer to eight to nine dollars a watt 10 years ago when you first installed solar. Prices have continued to fall, you know, obviously since you got your solar installed, but that also comes with the adoption and the introduction of new technology. Now that technology has started to plateau in recent years. We're starting to get the most efficient panels that we can possibly produce, and they're not coming around as fast as they used to be. So what's really awesome is if you live in California, California has put together a solar consumer buying guide for you to make sure that you ask all the right questions and you know what to look out for when you're getting your quotes. So what we've done at Drunko is we've produced our own solar consumers buying guide. So that way, if you're outside of California, you still know what questions to ask and what to look out for when you're getting your multiple quotes. You know, Riley, on that note, it's important for viewers to know why that solar consumer guide came out. And unfortunately, solar's gotten a really bad rap for high pressure sales, um, slimy sales, uh, pushing people into something that they don't wanna do, and overall getting a bad user experience or buying experience where you shelled out way more money than you should have. And to your point, Riley, the solar consumer guide that we've put together for DroneQuote allows customers to understand what kind of questions they should be asking, what kind of information they'd be looking up on an installer, their license information, the time in, that they've been in business, and other review information that you may not know to look for because, I mean, how many times do you buy solar in a year? You don't. You don't buy solar on a regular basis. So it can be very confusing for people, and that's why we put together this solar consumer guide for people outside of California. So let's talk about buying options. What, what kind of options do people have if they're buying? There's multiple ways of buying solar. There's a cash option, which is very common. There's a zero down solar loan option, which is also very common. And there's even a way of buying solar with home equity if you happen to have a little bit of equity in your home to do a cash out refi or a home equity line of credit. If you're looking to get solar with no capital out of pocket cost, Tesla has a rental option as well. You can kind of choose your house size, small, medium, large, and they'll come and put panels on and they'll take them off when you don't want them anymore. But I always wanted to own. I like the idea of having my own panels. So in that case, Tesla gives you quotes. You can compare with your own quote and make a good informed decision. Yeah, on the, on the rental or, or the leasing option, I always tell people, if you own your home, why wouldn't you own the electricity or the system that produces that electricity? Yeah, I, I agree. But for some people, that might not be an option and they want to get panels. So that's it's nice that there's all these options out there and these different approaches to it. So that's a really good point because sometimes people cannot use that tax credit. 
and that's when a rental or a lease option does make a lot of sense. Well, and Ricky, since you actually paid cash for your panels, you're actually adding equity to your home, especially here in Southern California. We need everything that we can to make sure that we can uh, we can sell these houses yeah. at that top dollar. Yeah, absolutely. I know a lot of people in California look for solar because they'd rather move into a house that has panels than not. Of course. So homes with solar in California sell quicker and they sell for more. So the thing that people don't think about when they're buying solar is how that solar system is going to impact the sale of a home. If you have a cash system, it's super easy, very cut and dry. Yeah, it's an asset, it's a part of the house, and it adds value. Exactly. However, when it's a lease option, it gets a little bit more hairy. There's different variables that come into the picture, and it can complicate the sale. And the worst is when people use PACE, Property Assessed Clean Energy, and it attaches to the taxes of the home. That is very difficult to refinance a house. People don't think about that. And it it's difficult to sell the house because you have to pay off the whole system and there's prepayment penalties. So it sounds like there's a lot of information and whenever I have questions about solar, that's why I call you guys up and I'm, I thank you for always taking my calls and answering our questions. First and foremost, if you're thinking about solar, check them out. We'll have links in the description to the website. Use our referral code, right, for good prices. Mm -hmm. And uh, just in general, if our viewers have questions about anything, like you mentioned Pace, like I didn't even know about that. If our viewers have any questions, can you like provide an email address they can reach out to you guys and ask questions to? Absolutely. If viewers want to reach out to us, you can reach out to us at info at dronequote.net and either Riley or myself will get behind the computer and respond to your questions. That's awesome. Yeah, because I mean, part of why I hate the salesman and all the high pressure stuff is you should never make a decision on spending thousands of dollars in an instant. You should sleep on it and think about it. So. Take your time. These guys are a treasure trove of knowledge. And um, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having us. Appreciate it. So that pretty much wraps it up for us. Buying solar in 2020 is something I'm thinking about doing. I will make videos with what I decide to do, but I do want to buy another 10 or 15 panels or so. So we'll keep you posted there. If you have any questions, reach out to these guys. And if you've already gotten a quote, you're thinking about getting a quote, at least let them also offer some quotes and you have all the options in the world to think about it. So that pretty much wraps it up for us. Again, I'm Ricky, and this is Tupa Da Vinci.